so today we got a question from Jeremy, who's 33 years old, and he just started jiu-jitsu about a month ago, and he's in a unique point in his life because he was born with a an eye illness that was progressive, and it slowly, slowly got to the point where he's now legally blind. He says he has like a little bit of tunnel vision, but otherwise he can't really see anything at all. And he said he just started jiu-jitsu about a month ago. He's since given up a lot of the sports and activities that he used to do because he just physically can't do them anymore with his visual impairment. But he's curious about how far he can progress in jiu-jitsu with this tunnel vision, with this blindness that he has. He says that he's training at a good gym and all the guys are really helpful. And he says that for the most part, once they're like engaged and they're locked up with training, he says that you know he can just feel his way through things. But again, he's in a new sport, a new martial art with an illness that's taken on to a new phase. And he's just wondering if I have any idea um, on dealing with it as a person getting into grappling, being blind. So brother, thank you for the question. And I have some experience with blind grapplers and most of it's positive. So I hopefully this will help you out in this situation and be encouraging to you. So the first time I ever came across a blind grappler was back in high school. There was a young girl there that was a teenager that was competing against my buddy. She was the 103 for some school. My buddy was 103. This is like my best friend at the time, right? And for you guys that don't know wrestling or don't know weight classes, 103 means like that's your weight class. So you weigh in at 103 or lower, okay? So my buddy competes against her in the semis. He ends up beating her, you know, by pins her in the second period. But she ended up taking sec- or third at that that tournament that day. And she beat like several dudes. And we were all like, damn, the blind girl, she's tough. Now, you got to remember, this is 20 years ago, guys. It's 2003. So women wrestling and being really nasty was such a rare thing. Women being into fighting and combat sports was really not a thing. And so for us, it was just like we weren't used to it. And so all of a sudden, there's this blind girl from the Kentucky School for the Blind. And I mean, she's just thrashing these dudes. And it was pretty impressive. She was like, she made front page of the newspaper on Monday. And then... Later on, when I was training, I ended up training with uh, a guy, one of my best training partners from the time I was like a late purple and brown belt, was a guy named Jason. Now, Jason, um, when we would roll, well, first off, let's go back. Here, Jason was legally blind. Like, I mean, he had like glasses that were like this thick, you know, that you you could like see into the future if you put them on. (laughs) When we would, um, when we go to eat at restaurants, I mean, he'd be reading like this, you know, he just couldn't see, right? So he was like, he was, and he wrestled, I think he wrestled for uh, Kentucky School for the Blind too. Um, another funny thing is I, I used to, Jason, he, he, he's a good sport. I used to mess with him so much. When um, I remember we would get to class and train, he would extend, sometimes extend his hand to shake my hand. And I would come up to him and like touch his face like, hey, Jason, good to see you. And he would, uh, he had some choice words for me afterwards, you know, but Jason would beat the brakes off me. I remember like rolling with him. I mean, man, it was sometimes some painful rolls because he would like really put the pressure on me and beat the crap out of me. He had one of the tightest side controls I've ever felt. And uh, he was a great training partner. And again, he was a blind guy and he was super tough. He did judo, um, he did jujitsu and he was good at both. And so again, super, super tough guy. Um, and again, was one of the reasons why I got really good at escaping side control because he freaking took it to me. And then recently, just about two years ago, back before the COVID times, I went to the pans and there was a guy that I met. I'm going to look his name up for you real quick. His Instagram tag is blind grappler. His name's Clinton. And so Clinton comes up to me at the pans a couple years ago and he like says, Hey man, I watch your videos and stuff like that. You know, the normal stuff. And I was like, cool, man. So I get like, you know, a picture with them and everything else. And he tags me in it later on. And so then I check out his Instagram. And I mean, like, the dude's good. Like, he's not just like a, a regular grappler. I mean, he's like throwing dudes and just submitting people and doing really, really well. And he was even good with takedowns, right? Because I know that was kind of a worry of yours in the message. And so that's just a few examples of blind grapplers. And if anybody watching this, if you have some experience being a blind grappler yourself or know someone... Feel free to little share a little comment down below for our friend and give him some encouragement. But I, I share these stories with you, Jeremy, because it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. I know you're in a new situation. You're in the unknown territory, unknown sport, unknown phase of the disease that you have. But the beautiful part about grappling with visual impairment is we get to be connected. And once we're connected, we then get that feeling. And that's a lot of times, to be honest with you. The further you get into grappling, the more and more you rely on that feeling rather than sight. I mean, I'm never like looking around at stuff like, okay, what do I need to do? Every now and then I'll notice something like eye-wise, but almost always I'm more, it's, it's more about intuition. And especially on the ground, it's almost all intuition. Like I remember one time my white belt, one of my white belts was saying, Chewy, what are you looking for when you're going for this particular technique? 
And I told him, I was like, I'm not looking for anything. I'm feeling for it. I was like, because as soon as you move this way, I can feel it and I go for the move. Or as soon as you move this way, your arms expose and I can feel it and I go for it. And so you might find that because of your visual impairment, you develop that intuitive sense of the body faster than someone else who can rely on other senses like their eyes uh, and their sight because you have to. And so long term, it may be a benefit. Uh, I remember it's an Emerson quote. And I don't remember the full thing, but I remember the end of it. It was like, thank your defects because they'll pay dividends on the other side. And so his whole thing about in the little essay that he was writing was basically like, sometimes we become too reliant on whatever's working for us. We become too comfortable and complacent. But our defects, the stuff where like our problems, our struggles, um, our blindness, whatever it could be, they have benefits to them if we can push through them. And so there could be a benefit to your blindness to you long term as you develop this intuitive sense of the body faster than some of your other training partners who are maybe starting around the same time. Again, I don't know that, but that would be kind of a, an idea that I would sort of think about because that's something that really like that intuitive sense of the body, that's what we're after in jujitsu long term. So anyway, bro, um, I just wanted to do this video with you to encourage you with your start in training and to let you know that there are people out there that are blind that are dealing with it just fine and they're like really tough grapplers and that if you stick with it, you can be a tough grappler. You can be very, very, very good at it. And uh, again, good luck with everything, sir. And I'll talk to you next time.